This is the Zima board. And Icewell Technology, who is the company that created it, reached out to me to review it. And as soon as I saw it, I immediately said yes, because I've been really interested in this device and it was just something I never got to. So I jumped on the opportunity to get my hands on one and review it. And when I got it and used it, I had a totally different opinion of it by the end of it. And we're gonna get to that in a minute. But before we get there, let's take a look at the specs and then let's take a look at some of the use cases that I think people will actually use this for. So from a specs perspective, there are three different models that you can buy. Each of them have uh, slightly different CPUs and more memory. So the higher you go up, the better the CPU and the better the memory. Now it has two SATA ports, which are on the back here. It has two gigabit NICs, which are on the front. It has two USB 3.0 ports, and it has a PCIe 2.0 by four port on the side. So from a ports perspective, there's actually a lot from this device that you can do. And for the most part, you can run various different things on it, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, one other thing I wanna point out is that from a power usage perspective, I measured this thing running at around three watts at idle. Uh, so from that perspective, it's a low power device that you can run 24 seven to do various things. Let's talk about some of those things. So this thing comes pre-installed with Casa OS. And the first thing I wanna point out here is what I like the most about this is that this device can be used by beginners right out of the box with Casa OS, but it has a wide range of users that can actually use this thing because they advertise it as a, the, the world's first hackable board. I think that's just a marketing thing. I don't even really know what that means, but whatever, it's the world's first hackable board. Um, what it allows you to do is it allows you to run Casa OS right out of the box, which you can configure in as little as two minutes. I have an article I'll leave in the description, but after you configure Casa OS, you basically have one click Docker containers that you can install. So you can run things like Vault Warden, which is a uh, Bitwarden self-hosted password manager. You can run media servers like Jellyfin or Plex if you wanted to. Uh, you can do a lot of different things. And basically any Docker container can be run on here by manually installing it. So if you're a beginner and you say, I just wanna have a, a low power device that will run Docker containers, this could be it. It also allows you to create network shares utilizing SMB. So Casa OS is actually very powerful from a beginner's perspective if you just wanna buy it to run certain services that are potentially running on other devices and you just wanna offload it to this. This is a great option for that. But I hinted earlier at that gamut. So yes, we're at the beginners and the beginners can use Casa OS, but experts can use this to run a firewall. I know it sounds crazy, but you can run OpenSense. You can run PFSense. If you wanted to with the PCIe slot, you can actually install something like this. It looks a little weird, but it's a dual port, two and a half gigabit, uh, Ethernet adapter, which would give you two, two and a half gigabit NICs. So from a firewall perspective, if you wanted to run PFSense or OpenSense, you can configure it either with the default gigabit NICs and just utilize one as the LAN and one as the WAN port, or you could potentially expand it and then utilize a PCIe adapter to expand it even further. You can run a media server on this. So I hinted earlier at Jellyfin or Plex, but you can install Jellyfin, you can install Plex, you can install MB. You would need some storage to actually store the video files, but you could use this to run that. You can use it as crazy as this sounds as a hypervisor. You can install Proxmox on this. I wouldn't recommend that you do, but you can because it's x86 based. If you wanted to run Home Assistant on this to manage your smart home, you can run Home Assistant on it. If you wanted it to just monitor your network, it's low powered enough that you can leave it to do that. If you wanted it to run the Unify controller, you get the point. I'm going a little overboard here, but there are so many things that you can do with this because it's x86 based. And what I love the most about it is how low powered it is. So that leaves us with one main and major challenge. What is it best for? And I can't answer that because it's not gonna be the best firewall that you can run. It's not gonna be the best media server you can run. It's definitely not gonna be the best hypervisor you can run. It's a good option for, for smart homes, 
but there's going to be more powerful devices that can run smart home software. So what is this good for? Well, that's where the challenge comes in because it's good for everything I just said, but you need to determine upfront what you want to use this as. That was my challenge because when they reached out to me to review this, there was like a hundred things running through my head. I wanted to try to turn this thing into a NAS. I wanted to try to use it for various things. And in one way or another, you can use it for basically anything you can imagine as long as it runs on x86 and you know doesn't need a ton of uh, computing power like a hypervisor, like I said earlier. But that's where I realized that I screwed up because as soon as I got it, I said, I have a lot of different ideas for it, but I don't have a specific idea for it. So what I'd urge you to do if you want to buy one of these, and I, I do recommend it. I actually, I've used it for about two weeks now. I really, really like it. And I think that if you want a low power device to add to your home lab, that this should be a competitor in that space for you. You can compare it to other options, but I think that this is an awesome option. Um, the challenge is going to be what you're going to use it for. You can use it for various things. If you wanted to set it up as a dedicated DNS server, you can do that. It's just, this video could be two hours long by just explaining all the different things that it can actually do because there's so many. But the key to this device, and this is my opinion after using it for about two weeks, the key to this device is that it can do everything I just said in a small form factor, an extremely small form factor. I mean, this thing is not that much bigger than a Raspberry Pi. So I've watched a few different videos on this, and the best video, in my opinion, was made by Techno Tim, because he created a video on 20 different things that you can do with the Zima board. And that video, while it only goes through different projects, and it does give a good overview of the actual device, but it goes through different projects that you can do with it, and the reason I love the video so much is because it highlights that this device is not something that you would purchase to do the same thing as somebody else. Obviously you could, but there's just so many different things that you can do with it that your requirements and what you're looking for will ultimately determine what you should use it for. So as a reviewer, all I can really tell you is that you can use this thing for a ton of different things. And you should check out Techno Tim's video to see some of those things. But those things are oftentimes what makes it challenging to review this. Because the reality is that it can do all of those things, but as a reviewer, it's difficult to get up here and say, I think you should use it for this. Because that answer is gonna be different for everybody. So. I like the Zima board. I actually like it a lot. I'm probably going to use this as my personal test bench to just test out various different uh, operating systems, services, whatever you know I'm I'm doing at that moment in time. Um, it's low powered. It has a lot of expansion from the PCIe slot. I like the SATA ports on it, and all that reviewing it did is actually get me a lot more excited for their Zima Cube. So the Zima Cube is a personal cloud. Basically, it's designed to be a NAS device, uh, a six-bay NAS device, and it looks awesome. I don't know how else to describe it. It just looks awesome. What I like about it is it appears as if it's designed to be a NAS, where the Zima board is designed to be tons of different things, potentially even a NAS. The Zima Cube is going to fit into that niche where the majority of people buy it to be a NAS. I mean, they're advertising it to run Casa OS, um, and obviously it can run Casa OS, and maybe they'll turn Casa OS into just a full-blown NAS operating system. Um, so it'll, it'll run Casa OS, but the same way with the Zima board, you can install your own operating system. So you can go through, install your own operating system, and that device is something... I am extremely excited for, and I'm hoping that I can get my hands on that because from a NAS perspective, I like that 
the market seems to be going towards the direction of pre-built NAS devices where you can install your own operating system. Um, there are a few different devices that should be coming out where you can do that. And I think that the Zima Cube is going to be something where users who were interested in a pre-built NAS didn't want to build their own NAS, but wanted to run their own software, can purchase a device like that, set it up and get exactly what they want. So I'm extremely excited for that. So that was a little bit of a tangent. Um, and you know, I do have to say that this was probably the most challenging device that I've ever personally reviewed just because of how many different things you can do with it. It's hard to zone in on what you can actually do with it because there's just so many. But if you want to buy the Zima board, I will leave a link to it in the description. It's an affiliate link. You can use it if you want. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, but it'll be an affiliate link. I would recommend that you check out the PCIe devices as well. And like I said, if you're somebody that wants a low power device for a specific task, this is probably the answer. So thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if not, I will see you next time.